So you may have already watched me cut these five quarter by eight western red cedar boards on my old sawmill earlier this spring in a video that we released. It was one of the single most energizing days of my 66 years of life and I'm going to always remember it. It was such a blast because to cut a red cedar log that was taken from the Rock Creek drainage where I grew up on a circular sawmill that I designed and built when I was 22 and now to size and finish them in order to install in the gate project that's going to be protecting and sort of setting off my place here for probably the rest of my life is frankly a little overwhelming in the best possible sense. So I picked up this little DeWalt planer maybe 15 years ago or so. I'd been watching for a long time for a planer because I've needed one and I knew that eventually the right job would come along and it did. And boy, was I excited to finally have a planer in the shop. But to tell you the truth, even though it's way better than nothing at all, I don't think I would buy another one just like it. Now, maybe my expectations are unrealistic, but it is seriously underpowered. And these DeWalt blades just absolutely will not stay sharp as long as it seems like they ought to. But like I said in the beginning, it's way better than nothing at all. The timing of this whole process right here in my shop is good because I've been organizing this woodworking space for a big furniture building project that we're bringing to the channel. So prepping these boards went a lot smoother and easier than it would have if I would have tried it a couple years ago. What a blessing it is to have good tools. So as I think back, it's been years since I actually needed to use a block plane very much on a project. You know, sure, occasionally champ for the edge of something or pick it up to knock off a burr. But Kenny encouraged me and coached me as I sharpened this thing up and started tapering the ends that will slip into the steel frames. And I was reminded again that it's just kind of a pleasure to do a little woodworking by hand. The moment Kelly started putting the Sherwin-Williams deck stain onto these pieces of cedar, all of the extra messing around to get the rough sawn look on these boards was forgotten and the real beauty of this lumber snapped into focus. The moisture content on these things is about 9% which is pretty dry so I'm hoping that this sealer soaks in a good long ways and lasts for a while. But even if it does I know that it's going to take maintenance to keep these things looking good over time. Well it's time to put the boards in the gate. It's sort of a an elaborate little dance that I hope I designed properly. I think I did. Roland came over last night and put another brace up against the post. So it's way less dynamic in the open position. It's going to be great. So I start out with putting these little blocks, white oak, right down in there to support the bottom of the board, which I had to cut short so I can embed it behind two pieces of steel, both top and bottom. Anyhow, here we go. Now, as you can see, it took me a few minutes to get the hang of fussing these upper pieces into place, but the system finally dawned on me and we were off to the races. Okay, right here, right here is a design flaw. I forgot or never flashed on the fact 
that that curved brace out there was going to make it impossible to run the carriage bolts through from the face. And there's only about three-eighths of an inch back on the other side for a nut. So I'll have to get the right bolt length and run it through and fish a nut down in there and see if I can tighten it up. Even one, just to keep this from rotating, but I mean, best laid plans, right? You know, speaking as a carpenter, I think in a perfect world, I'd be working with Western Red Cedar at least three times a week, at least, because it works so nicely and it smells heavenly. It is spectacularly beautiful with a natural oil finish. I don't know how many times I can say it, but I love Western Red Cedar. I like the oil finish. There's a couple little shadow lines on here from stickers. Let me show you. Aside from that, I think I'm vastly contented. On a few of these boards, putting stickers over the top while the oil was still wet, probably soaked up a little bit of the oil or something. We've got just little shadow lines, but those are gonna go away. I mean, it's within allowable tolerances. In general, where we are now is the gate is secure. It feels good at night to have this up. I mean, I guess I had been ignoring a feeling of vulnerability as town has moved out closer to where I am. But the last thing is to solve the electrical issues. Bringing out the data, bringing out the power, hooking up the keypads and the electric eyes and the opener and making sure all of that is speaking to each other. I've got good help. They'll keep me out of trouble. And I expect that even they will have a little trouble chasing the gremlins, but I have every confidence that the gremlins will finally be wiped out. Thanks for watching Essential Craftsman, and keep up the good work.